A Daily Walk with Pastor in the Bible, Wednesday, September 2nd, Hannah, Psalm 138. I give thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul you increase. All the kings of the earth shall give you thanks, O Lord, for they have heard the word of your mouth, and they shall sing in the way of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. The Old Testament reading is from 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. So Ahab sent all the people of Israel and gathered the prophets together at Mount Carmel. And Elijah came near to all the people and said, How long will you go limping between two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people did not answer him a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I, even I only, am left a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are four hundred fifty men. Let two bulls be given to us, and let them choose one bull for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and lay it on the wood, but put no fire to it. And I will prepare the other bull, and lay it on wood, and put no fire to it. And you call upon the name of your God, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. And the God who answers by fire, he is God. And all the people answered, It is well spoken. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose for yourself one bull, and prepare it first, for you are many. And call upon the name of your God, but put no fire to it. And they took the bull that was given them, and they prepared it, and called upon the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, O Baal, answer us. But there was no voice, and no one answered. And they limped around the altar that they had made. And at noon Elijah mocked them, saying, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he is musing, or he is relieving himself, or he is on a journey, or perhaps he is asleep and must be awakened. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their custom with swords and lances until the blood gushed out upon them. And as midday passed, they raved on until the time of the offering of the oblation. But there was no voice, no one answered, no one paid attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me. And all the people came near to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been thrown down. Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be your name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar, as great as could contain two sheaths of seed. And he put the wood in the altar, and cut the bull in pieces, and laid it on the wood. And he said, Fill four jars with water, and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. And he said, Do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, do it a third time, and they did it a third time. And the water ran around the altar 
and filled the trench also with water. And at the time of the offering of the oblation, Elijah the prophet came near and said, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Answer me, that these people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. Then the fire of the Lord fell, and consumed the burnt offering, and the wood, and the stone, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, he is God, the Lord, he is God. And Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they seized them. And Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slaughtered them there. The New Testament reading is from Ephesians, the second chapter. And you were dead in the trespasses and sin in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we once lived, among whom we once lived, in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together in Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in the kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not of your own doing, it is a gift of God, not a result of works so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcised by what is called the circumcised, which is made in the flesh by hands, Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one, and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility, by abolishing the law of the commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Christ himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit.
A writing of Martin Luther. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren one that does not bear. Break forth and shout, Thou who art not in travail. For the desolate hath more children than she who has a husband. Paul quotes this passage, which is completely allegorical, from the prophet Isaiah. It is written, he says, that the mother of many children who has a husband must grow sick and perish, while the barren one who does not bear must have very many children. Hannah sings the same way in her canticle, from which Isaiah took this prophecy. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who are full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who are hungry have ceased to hunger. The barren have borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. It is an amazing thing, she says, that the one who was prolific will be barren, and the one who was barren will be prolific. Those who were mighty, satisfied, alive, righteous, blessed, rich, and glorious, will be feeble, hungry, sentenced to death, sinful, condemned, poor, and shameful. And on the other hand, the feeble and the hungry will be mighty and satisfied. With this allegory from the prophet Isaiah, Paul shows the difference between Hagar and Sarah, that is, between the synagogue and the church, or between the law and the gospel. If they follow the law and perform its outward works, they think they are righteous. All such men are slaves, not free men, because they are sons of Hagar, who gave birth into slavery. If they are slaves, they do not share the inheritance, but are cast out of the house. The slaves do not continue in the house forever. In fact, they have now been thrown out of the kingdom of grace and freedom. He who does not believe is condemned already. Therefore, they remain under the curse of the law, under sin, death, and the power of the devil, under the wrath and judgment of God. Martin Luther Grace, God's Son, our only Savior, came down to earth to bear our sin. Was it because of your own merit that Jesus died your soul to win? No, it was grace and grace alone that brought him from his heavenly throne. Let us pray. God, the Father Almighty, maker of all things, you looked on the affliction of your barren servant Hannah and did not forget her, but answered her prayers with the gift of a son. So hear our supplications and petitions, and fill our emptiness, granting us trust in your provision, so that we, like Hannah, might render unto you all thankfulness and praise, and delight in the miraculous birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, creator and sustainer of all things, we pray for the sick, 
that they may be healed, the trouble granted peace, the grieving comforted, and the dying kept in peace. Especially do we pray for Brandon, Vitra, Rick, June, June, Judy, Cheryl, Aaron, Pastor Brian, Claire, Zachary, Pastor Jim, Pastor John, Maddie, Daniel, Terry, Michelle, John, Jennifer, Janet, and Paul. For the long-term homebound and those in nursing homes, Vitra, Rick, and June. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Luther's Morning Prayer I thank thee, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Or Luther's Evening Prayer I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Hannah. Hannah was the favored wife of Echaniah the Ephraimite, and a devoted mother of the prophet Solomon. He was born to her, after years of bitter barrenness and fervent prayer for a son. After she weaned her son, Hannah expressed her gratitude by returning him for service in the Lord's house at Shiloh. Her prayer, Psalm of Thanksgiving, began with the words, My heart exalts in the Lord, my strength is exalted in the Lord a song foreshadowing the Magnificat, the Song of Mary, centuries later. The name Hannah derives from the Hebrew word for grace. She is remembered and honored for joyfully having kept the vow she made before her son's birth and offering him for lifelong service to God.